on this very, very late Halloween special. I wanted to take a look at something I didn't have enough time to cover in UN Owen was her explain. I wanted to look at the possibility that Flandre might have been the murderer in a murder mystery. And to go along with this, I wanted to take a look at another aspect of Toho canon. The true identity of the Puro. First, what murder mystery was Flandre a part of? Well, as many Toho 6 and Flandre fans know, Toho 6 heavily references And Then There Were None, a classic murder mystery novel by Agatha Christie. Fair warning, this video contains spoilers for And Then There Were None, but I'll also be giving another warning when the huge spoilers actually start. To briefly summarize the book, ten people are on an island for a party. They're invited by someone named Yuan Owen. They quickly piece together that Yuan Owen is short for unknown. As the party starts, however, people slowly start to die in ways that eerily match a nursery rhyme called Ten Little Soldiers. In this nursery rhyme, several deaths are described for ten people. Here's the first line of the poem. Ten little soldiers went out to dine, one choked his little self, and then there were nine. The first person who dies in the book dies of cyanide poisoning. It makes it seem like they choked on their drink. This death and the other deaths in the book eerily match the lines of the poem, and they match in order of how the deaths happen. The people are trapped on the island, so as they're dying one by one, both the reader and the characters are trying to figure out who the killer is. They deduce that the murderer is likely Ewan Owen, but they don't know who this unknown assailant is. They're pretty sure it's one of the party guests, since they're the only ones on the island. So, Ewan Owen is likely one of the main characters. There's another crucial aspect to this story. Every person on this island had led to the death of someone else in their past, whether it be through causing someone to kill themselves or by performing surgery on a patient while drunk. The people on the island weren't really punished, they all managed to escape the law. In Ewan Owen's eyes, that was unforgivable. And so, that formed Ewan Owen's vendetta for murder. Okay, that was a brief summary of And Then There Were None. Now, here's where the theory starts. I believe that the events of And Then There Were None played out in Toho's universe, but I think the events happened in a different way. This is where the big spoilers begin for And Then There Were None, so you've been warned. I'll stop short of revealing who the actual culprit is, and instead, just talk about their motivations. As mentioned earlier, Ewan Owen's vendetta for murder is justice. They kill people who they think were not properly punished for their crimes, and they take great joy in killing too. What's important to understand is that Ewan Owen is not killing for the sake of killing. In their twisted mind, they're enacting justice. That's all we need to know for now. The song You and Owen Was Her is Flandre's theme, so it might imply that Flandre is You and Owen in the Toho universe. This alone is pretty shaky, and wouldn't be enough evidence. But there's a few more hints that Zoom's dropped. After Marissa beats Flandre in the extra story, they discuss the poem featured in And Then There Were None. Marissa recites the last line of the poem, which I will censor here to avoid getting demonetized. She went and herself. And then there were none. So how did this person die? Well, it involved a rope tied to a high point. I'm sure you can infer what I mean. But Flandre responds to Marissa with, she died by the bullet, and then there were none. This is how Flandre thought the last line of the poem went, and how she thought she would take down Marissa. Flandre had the last line wrong. Marissa even notes that it's not the real song. Why does this matter? Well, we gotta jump a bit. In the Toho music CD Dolls in Studio Paradise, we get a story where a group of wise men each start dying one by one. Sound familiar? This murderer is described as a hero, which is a sort of creepy clown figure. 
there's one member of the group that has a recurring plot thread of them trying to take their life with a rope. And then, then there were none, this is how the final death happens. Before and then there were none takes place, one of the characters, Vera Claythorne, lets the boy she was taking care of drown so that his uncle can inherit his family's estate and marry her. To be clear, this was all Vera's idea. The uncle had no involvement and was disgusted. She was never convicted for murder, and before the story happened, lived the rest of her life free. Though she lived on relatively sane, everything happening on the island starts to pile guilt onto her conscience. When Vera is the last one standing on the island, she sees a conveniently placed rope tied in a proper knot. With the previous lines of the poem matching how each person was killed beforehand, Vera sees the rope as both justice and destiny. Vera does the dirty deed herself, and ends up being the last victim to die. And then, there were none. Vera's method of death matches the last line of the poem, and that line is what influences Vera to end her life out of guilt. But, what if the rope wasn't there? Let's say there was a gun instead, maybe because you and Owen set things up wrong. Maybe because you and Owen got the last line of the poem wrong. Since a gun wouldn't match the line of the poem, Vera might not come to the same mental conclusions she comes to in the original story. The framing device of Destiny would be gone without the rope. This could lead to her eventually escaping the island instead of dying. But after the trauma of seeing people die one by one as retributions for murders they committed, it's possible that she might have gone... insane. Now, back to dolls and pseudo-paradise. As said by one of the people in the CD's story, I killed some time alone in an endless darkness, and soon realized that the Piro is among us. Suh, no. But seriously, this means that like and then there were none, the Piro is likely one of the group members. Also said in Dolls and Pseudo Paradise, yet somehow I'm still conscious. Was the rope too weak? As mentioned before, there's a person who tries, and fails to take their own life with the rope. It definitely fails the first time, and eventually this person ends up being the only one left. The last person alive in a murder mystery story. Hmm. The person keeps saying to themselves that even though they're last, they couldn't be the murderer. They just couldn't. They then take the rope and end their life. So, yeah. This does match Vera Claythorne, but back it up. I said earlier that the main characters are called Eight Wise Men, right? So, this can't be her. Or can it? In the epilogue to the CD, Reimu writes that she saw a girl stick her tongue out and then the girl left Gensokyo. Reimu says that girl was the only woman of the Eight Honest Men. So, Zune went out of his way to make the only survivor a woman? Was this woman Vera Claythorne? And notice how she sticks her tongue out. Almost like... a clown. Like a Piro. This album does in fact have a cover of You and Owen was her in it, as well as some connections to And Then There Were None and Toho 6. In And Then There Were None, the party guests all read the poem before the murders start. So Vera could have still had the idea of using the rope in her mind. This would explain why ending her life with it would be something she tries to do. But, perhaps her trauma from the events is what led her to kill the people she comes into Gensokyo with. Maybe because she dodged fate, the rope's never going to work on her anymore. Even when she tries to end her life again. If Vera Claythorne really is alive in Dolls in Pseudo Paradise, then the dialogue tidbit between Flandre and Marissa jumps from being a simple joke to possibly a larger piece of the story. But then, why would Flandre even try to kill people in the first place? I think the key lies with the original Ewan Owen's intentions. In the book, you and Owen was killing to bring justice. To avoid some spoilers for certain... printed works, let's just say that this form of justice isn't uncommon in the world of Toho. 
Toho 6 and Dolls in Pseudo Paradise were both released alongside each other, and in that sense, it is reasonable to assume that Zune intended for overlap between the two stories, especially since the CD has you and Owen was her in it. Flandre being you and Owen in Toho canon is definitely a possibility. The Scarlet Devil Mansion itself wasn't originally in Gensokyo. It used to be part of the outside world. And then the Renun took place in a mansion as well, so... If the book in the Toho universe took place in the Scarlet Devil Mansion, the settings would still match up. The mansion likely doesn't move to Gensokyo until after the story takes place. As for how the murderer could be Flandre if Ewan Owen was a main character in the original story, well, one of Flandre's things is being hidden. It's why we don't see her that much in the main series. Well, you know until... Well, I guess at this point you either know or don't know. So, Flandre could have orchestrated the events of the book from the comfort of the basement. She could be following the original Ewan Owen's sense of justice as a way to find people to kill. If she really forgot the last line of the poem, then Vera Claythorne might not have killed herself. From there, Vera could go insane, which would lead into the events of Dolls and Seedle Paradise. With Toho 6 and Dolls, you get two pieces of Toho works that can combine to reveal the alternate fates of a character from a completely different story. From all of that, you get one possible interpretation. I'm not going to pretend that some of this isn't a little far-fetched. This is more so me just describing what I think could have happened rather than trying to say, this is what definitely happened. There's a ton of different ways to interpret those original Toho scenes. The Piro uses dolls, so maybe she's actually a secret reintroduction to Alice before Toho 7. When Marissa asks Flandre, why don't you do as the real song says, she isn't actually referring to the line she said earlier. Instead, she comes up with her own line. She got married, and then there were none. The talk between Marissa and Flandre with the poem lines could totally just be a joke. Also, where would the other mansion guests be during and then there were none? Did they just hide away while the book takes place? This theory is not airtight in the slightest. But, I do think that there are just enough hints to where you could interpret Flandre as you and Owen, and Vera Claythorn as the Piro. It doesn't mean you have to, but the option is still there. Like a lot of Toho, what you think happened is up to you. In any case, it's cool that there's so many connections between Toho and one of the greatest murder mystery novels of all time. I'm Megapig9001, I hope you had a happy Halloween, and Merry Christmas.